So my question is, can you give context as to the scale of the connected temples and what that means in reference to the time that they were built in, in terms of design and engineering? Okay, can you be more specific? That's a very so, broad question. Yeah. Yes. So when I was looking at the picture, I had no context in terms of a mod in modern day of how those buildings would have been constructed, what the scale would be if we were to put it on the ground and how that would have been achieved at the time and what that meant in terms of design and what kind of engineering was required to create things of that scale. Those, those are good questions. And, and I have, you know, an artistic and an architectural and an engineering mindset. So when I look at the building, I look at it from that perspective. And in all of my years of traveling to Kemet and all of my reading of Kemetic texts, what I can say is that I have not found any significant publications that speak to exactly what you asked, right? Uh, but we know that there are dozens of temples that were built uh, that are still standing in Kemet. There are dozens of other temples that were built and, and have not been excavated yet. Uh, and they built temples and pyramids and tombs. So that required teams and schools of architects and engineers and designers and draftspersons and sculptors and artists and, and painters. I haven't seen the documentation of how they did that, which tells me that it probably exists in some private library somewhere, okay? What I, what I can share with you is something that we just discovered a couple of years ago. We have a, we have a Austrian architect who comes to our site every year and he uh, does the, the architectural drawings of the sites based on what we've excavated that year. And about four years ago, uh, what he found uh, above ground, where the superstructure was, he found the footprint of a pylon. He found the put footprint of one, two, three pylons. So a pylon is the formal entrance to a temple. So what that means is Karakamen's tomb was not just a tomb, it was a temple tomb. Now, what does that mean? A tomb is where you bury somebody, you seal the tomb, and you're done. But a temple is where you come regularly to commune, not necessarily to worship, but to commune with an ancestor or a nature. So Karakamen's tomb was a temple tomb where his body was enshrined in the burial chamber, but that, that central axis where the statue of, of Osiris was a place where the priests and priestesses who were part of his, his order had regular access to the ancestors who were there and communicated with them on a regular basis. So that just moves everything into an entirely different level. And that's what the Kushites were expert in doing. Because if you go to Kush, we had the opportunity to go to Kush last summer. We went with uh, Renoka Rashidi. And you know there's more pyramids in Kush than there are in Egypt. There's 118 pyramids in Egypt, and there's over 500 in Kush. And all of them have been destroyed. All of them have been destroyed, right? So... Uh, we're just really beginning to understand the questions that you asked me. And so that's why I'm so excited about training young folk to follow in our footsteps. You know, another 30 years, I'll probably be dead and gone. But the people that we've trained can follow in our footsteps and uncover other tombs and other temples and help answer that very question. So I'm about thinking, you know, 150 years into the future, the next seven generations, what are we doing now to train the next seven generations so that those questions will be answered. That's really what it's all about. 